My name is Anita Mujgara, and I come from uh, Sydney, Australia. And the lady sitting uh, to my left is my sister. Her name is Debra. Yeah, the challenges that uh, I've been facing in my life was, uh, you know, mar you know, marital issues, limitation, career limitation, and just challenges being, you know, attacked spiritually, you know, in the dream, and sometimes just, you know trying to do things and things not moving properly. That really did affect uh, my life, you know, in a very big way because you see that you want to, you know you have the capacity, you have the capability and the most saddening story is that you know the Lord and you know the promises of God but you still can't see yourself crossing the Red Sea, you can't see yourself, you know, you know entering that Canaan. Then you wander and you question yourself why and hence you need you know, deliverance. You need the grace of God. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, the, the main thing uh, has been actually uh, finances. Uh, so even though I have a job, uh, my finances were just all over the place. Uh, I, I've got a job, but I actually didn't, um, you know, have any money, you know, can't even uh, have any savings. And, you know, it's just been affecting my life so badly. Oh, it affects you mentally, really. Um, so sometimes you, you're, you're always wondering, and uh, it, it actually affects your faith. Uh, you think, is God hearing me? You know, what's happening? You, At my age, uh, you expect someone to be having a house, owning a property, you know, married and having kids and all those things. So those things, um, you know, affect your faith and they affect your mental uh, capacity. And you're always worried. And that's the main reason why we actually came here. Oh my god. The services were amazing. Um I must say just stepping into the very first service I've seen people pray, people dedicating their lives to God, people dedicating the service to God and when the man of God walks in, oh my god, it's just power peg. I've seen Jesus at work in this ministry. Yes, I did. I had the privilege and the grace to attend two services here at Charis. The experience has been phenomenal. I experienced the best worship. You know, I actually felt the presence of God. The time that is spent people praying, even before the word is preached, you know, it raises faith level. And the most amazing thing, sometimes when people are praying, you start to see people manifesting. They haven't been, you know, the man of God hasn't arrived or the man of God hasn't even laid hands on, on them. Everyone is so charged up. Everyone is praying. Everyone is pacing up and down. Really, really praying. You know, even if you don't have, you know, the energy to pray, you actually get your, your faith stepped up, so, you know, stirred up. And with the expectation already in your heart, you actually feel like, oh, you know, it's time to pray. So really the services have been, you know, I mean, it's, I, I, it's really words can't do justice to what I experience. It really takes someone to actually come to cherish and really experience what I have experienced. The worship, you know, the, the love, you know, mainly there's really an atmosphere of love in this place and hence why we are seeing this grace in so much, you know, abundance. And uh, the word was so rich, you know, very, very sharp to the point, you know, deep revelation, something that you actually take in your spirit and start to actually work for you. So my experience here at Charis has been really, really amazing. It only took the grace of God for me to know that something in South Africa like this is happening. And I challenge every South African, I challenge every South African, I've been saying this, really, South Africa needs now to understand what they have, what God has deposited through his servant in this place. Um. I'll start with slavery because that's the most recent one. Um, Men of God spoke about uh, coming out of slavery. That word hit uh, straight into my spirit. Men of God was saying that sometimes stagnation is actually a form of slavery and you need the mighty hand of God to take you out of slavery. That just touched me. And he spoke about authority. He said, as children of God, we should have the authority because the Bible says, we were given authority by Jesus Christ and I tell you when I leave this place in fact already I've already started functioning in the authority of Jesus Christ and I know for sure by coming into this place I'm out of my slavery oh, from those two messages I learned a lot 
The first message was about, was about authority. Whose authority are you under? You know, if you are under authority, if you are under the authority of Jesus Christ, you know that you're not doing things by yourself. You are under his power. You are under his direction. You are under his rulership. So you can't, you know, go in any other direction. And men of God spoke something beautifully. That even when you have that authority, you don't have to abuse it. He said something, you know, that uh, even him, he doesn't, with my, that authority given to him, he doesn't abuse it. And he, for him to even preach, he's preaching so easily because he's under a certain authority and he's not doing, you know, by himself. And now I really understood why, even after preaching, he can pray for the whole church because he's under authority. There's a government that overrules him. That government directs him. That government gives him energy, propels him, you know, gives him the grace. And the other message you did speak about was uh, slavery. Wow. That message, everyone in Africa, born again or not born again, they need to hear that message. Because we are coming from a history. We are coming from a lot of things. You know, whether it's religion, to do with where we've come from, ancestry, and also a lot of things that have impact our color, colonization. With examples that the men of God gave, we can set ourselves free. We can overcome that slavery. And I believe now, I really believe, that word being spoken, I believe the day for Africa is now. A new dawn for Africa is now. Even for South Africa, this is just, you know, so I took that word. Even for me, yes, definitely even, even for me. But you see, my vision is bigger because the things that I'm seeing here, they are really bigger, high-level things, really big, high-level things that, you know, should start to, you know, to impact our continent. And this is the message that we need to hear. Oh, <laughs> it, it was really, really great. I mean, I saw myself on Facebook and really before I saw myself, they were seeing me in Australia and they've been watching Chari. So I feel I've been the, the contact or the, you know, that point of contact, you know, for Australia to be touched. Really men of God in Australia. <laughs> men of God, we want you in Australia as soon as possible by the grace of God. <laughs> yeah, so when I, you know, and that's so true, we need him in Australia. And, you know, when I saw myself on uh, Facebook, I, I, I honestly, you know, was like, wow, you know, the grace that flowed for my deliverance was really, really amazing. It was, it took the grace of God. I came expecting I came expecting, but my expectation has been met and it's been exceeded. You know, I did not know about this ministry, but it just took me one and a half weeks to know this ministry through revelation of a dream and also confirmation by somebody who has been here. So really, as they say, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So one thing I must say is also that um, Charis uh, missionary media team, you're doing a great job. You're really doing a great job. Uh, you know, your quality of photos, what you write, how you report it. May God continue to give you that grace. May God continue to give you that grace. I'm really, really impressed. So come to Australia. <laughs> uh, so the very first thing that I saw from Apostle J.B. Makaranisa is that he's a man full of love. The man is so humble. The man knows and understands his calling and he knows who he's working for. Uh, the first time I saw him, uh, it was when we uh, actually arrived and we were not supposed to actually see him on that day. But he just brought us in. Oh man, I've never felt so much love. Apostle, I've never felt so much love. And just today having one-on-one -on -one with you, oh my God, I was feeling like I've got a father. Thank you so much, Apostle. Um, so I'll tell you the honest truth. Uh, I've seen a lot of people manifest. Um, I never thought that would happen to me. And is like the experience for me, I didn't even know what was happening. I only later realized, uh, well, heard the man of God saying, stand up. And I'm like, what just happened here? <laughs> and so I just thank God for my deliverance. I know, you know, God has done it for me and uh, greater things are uh, coming my way. 
Oh, today was really, really exceptional. You know, um, you know, I'll start from the time we've been here. Really, what we experienced from a man of God was love. He has a heart for people. He respects people. He genuinely loves people. No wonder the grace of his life. We just arrived and we were just like, you know, less than 20 minutes here. And he actually welcomed us. And, you know, he started speaking to our lives. And that really boosted our faith. That really lifted our faith. And it didn't end there. Uh, we had another encounter with him uh, after service again. Again, really feeling the love. I, I will not forget one night when he was praying for people who were going to leave. And then he touched us again and had this beautiful smile and said, ah, you people are still going to see you. That was so beautiful and so, so warm. And Wednesday again here in the service, we were with him dancing and you know which we loved so much we picked a very good moves from him <laughs> yeah but but you know you know the touch of uh, you know the having the heart for people is amazing so today really was remarkable you know he's a man of god he stands you know in the you know in the presence of god you know as he speaks to you you don't even need to question him but then he gave us the opportunity to really even speak with him and he's speaking back to us with divine authority with divine revelation in case you're not clear about things that you know that he has said like i had a few questions and then that questions they were answered there was something else and the time that he spends with you to god be the glory for raising a man like jb makanenisa in south africa and for africa and for the whole world so you know i'm coming back with a testimony and I'm coming back for more. Uh, well, my message is very clear and simple. This place has God. There is a man of God. There's a lot going on and I'm one person who is very, very careful. And I, I know I am very, very careful. But as I said earlier, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I had a dream of a man I did not know. He looked like another man of God. He spoke to me. And those words he spoke to me, immediately there was a turnaround in my life before I arrived here. And I did share that testimony. And to confirm that, somebody rang me who had been here from Scotland like a month ago and was starting to tell me about this ministry. I said, who is that? I'll check them out. Immediately when I uh, saw his video, he was exactly the man I saw in the dream, even his pulpit. So to anyone out there, this is my experience, to anyone out there who doubts Charis Missionary, who doubts Apostle J.B. Makananisa, uh, you are delaying your miracle. You are delaying your breakthrough. If you have the heart to believe, if you are in a situation, if you have seen anything that is on YouTube that you can relate to, make a way. This is home. Jesus Christ is manifesting himself in this place and uh, I mean I say this to the South African people as well very soon there'll be uh, you know I don't know if this is the right word stampede at the airport you know this grace is available for everyone to partake yeah God bless so much Apostle JB Makananisa we love you Apostle I I'm so humbled. I've learned so much uh, from you. I really have learned so much from you. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, also God bless you, uh, Mama. You know you've taught me to worship. You know I've uh, you know I you know you challenge me so much. Even praying with us in the church, just like any other member of the church. May God bless you, and I you know God bless you even for standing with Apostle in this journey god bless you so so much uh the main thing that i really would like to say that the days are evil okay and um there's a lot that is going out there that is going on out there but one thing that i want to say right here right now and i stand by what i say is that apostle jb makanenisa is a man of god is a man called by god is a man being used by god let me tell you something i never believed that i had a demon 
but today I got delivered by the power of Jesus Christ. The man is functioning in fivefold ministry. He teaches the word. He ministers deliverance. He ministers healing. He prophesies. He's got the word of knowledge. Apostle J.B. Makananisa is a true man of God. And I can say this here, right now, right here, without fear of contradiction. If you've got a challenge in your life, if you need deliverance, if you need healing, make your way to South Africa. Cherished Missionary Church is the place to be. Winnie Mandela Park, Madiba Drive. I got it. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. And we, we receive it. We love you, Mama. God bless you so much. We're looking forward to seeing you in Australia. Welcome to Australia, <laughs> Apostle. God bless you.